All right, and we've got another episode of the Contagious Art Podcast. Roll the title card. Do we have a title card? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, so this episode is going to be a little different. We got um, some doodle to do, but Danielle had a very busy week for herself, so she failed on our endeavor, and uh, she's going to be fired after this episode, so this is the last you're going to see of her. But I will head to the store after this. I have a few ideas of some things that I can create with uh, with the free time that I have this weekend. And, and maybe uh, drag into the following week, but hopefully I just get them done this weekend because um, I got a few ideas that I'm excited about. But I'm not going to tell you what they mm. are. <laughs> you have to subscribe and like this video to find out. <laughs> we'll know. If you didn't hit like, we'll know. What is it? Gonna like, it's just like a ping. Beep, 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 yeah, beep. This person. Unsubscribed. Beep, beep, yeah. beep, 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 beep. We passed, we passed 400 subscribers. You passed 400 subscribers. You're on this channel too. It's like a blip. <laughs> You're right here. You're like half this video. What, what is it? What do I, what do I take up? Like an eighth of the screen? Like nothing. I can make you smaller on the screen if you want. How, how much of the screen do you want to take up? Well, I think proportional size to a shrew. So I really <laughs> think like just a little. A little thing just like dee dee dee. <laughs> nagging in the corner <laughs> Daniel <laughs> um so I do have one doodle <clears throat> oops let's try and get that up here oh, it's oh no it's sideways well you can fix it I think it's sideways it's a little time lapse creation very brief it's not much because this one was a very fast drawing that I did um yeah, I, I don't know where I got the idea for it. It was just kind of like a random creation idea that just popped into my head. I was kind of thinking about that when I was listening to a podcast while I was driving. And uh, the the idea of like, where do ideas come from? And I would say that there's like a few distinct things where maybe like when you th when you think about art and the creativity and the process that goes into Ooh, it. Ooh, I like the nails. Uh, I really should have turned it up, right? You can in the editing. No, that's impossible. I don't have that kind of technology. But uh, so about ideas, uh, like where do they come from? So like sometimes uh, you might have like a goal in mind and then you try and construct something that fits that goal. And then that's like kind of where the project goes. And then other times <clears throat> I'll have something that just pops into mind completely out of nowhere, not prompted by anything. And it's it's almost exactly what I wanted to be upon arrival. Ooh, that's always lucky. Yeah. And uh, like there was one similar to that uh, in the previous episode, the Goopy Goober, um, the guy who was a sludge pile. But uh, this was also mm. another one where I just had this idea, and it was in my mind fairly clearly, for the most part. Um, I don't know why. I think it's kind of cool. It reminds me of a few different things. Um, there's a little bit of like, I think again, it kind of reminds me of, ah, uh, real monsters. <laughs> if anyone's ever seen that cartoon, um, I think I get that from just the eyes on the spikes. Uh, but I thought it was pretty cool and I just wanted to do it in a little black and white, simplify it. <clears throat> I'm still trying to decide on like, or I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to colorize something. Like if I were to create it in black and white and then I wanted to actually add color to it, it's much harder than I thought it was going to be. It's it's kind of a digital process that I thought I you know, I had seen people talk about it and 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 suggest that that's a good way to go about doing a drawing and you start with the black and white so you get your values with the dark and light and then you add color. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing to colorize it because it's far more finicky than I want it to be. Like, I want to be able to just take a paintbrush and go whoosh, right over it and make it the color and then retain the values, but it doesn't do that because I've experimented with doing that multiple times. And the closest thing I've seen that anyone 
suggested that sort of half worked was to use um the blend modes with the layers so you go in and there's things like multiply stuff like that and it, it it's stuff where you can make adjustments it's kind of like a photoshoppy type thing where you do color adjustments and there's different blend modes and then there's one that's called like color or something like that or mm. colorize and it, it doesn't it work exactly like you might think it does it doesn't just magically make it what you need it to be yeah um well, my idea, which is probably like far too simplistic, but can you change the opacity on the black and white layer and then like just like make it really light and put the color layer beneath it so it gives you still... If I want to do twice the work. <clears throat> I don't see how it's more work. Cuz I would still have to do the whole separate color layer and at that rate I might as well just do the color layer. So it, it, I would be shading in color and then also shading in shade uh black and white. Oh, that's what it sounded like to me anyways. No. What I what I was trying to do is like quickly color it after you've done all the work of getting the exact shading values when it's in black and white. I don't know, Abra. What do I know? Do She's I know? black and white. She is black and white. Um There was something else I was thinking about that. I don't remember. So we're just gonna move on. That's my little drawing doodle I, like I did it. quickly. I, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I was going to say, like, the nails, the nail shape's pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> if anything, I was kind of leaning in the direction of, like, a more feminine hand. And so that was, yeah. I guess, what I was trying to do. I want to know what happened to her. How did her hand get removed so brutally? Because that is not, that mm. is not one slice. That's that a, is. That's just a compound fracture. That's a mangling. <laughs> Absolutely mangled. It's just a flesh wound. <clears throat> Um, so this kind of leads into, uh, what we're going to be doing for the main part, which is a little bit of a discussion about, uh, traditional art and digital art and the comparison between the two things. And we're going to review some paintings that we've both created Ooh. in the past. Oh no, I thought we were going to play a game. Well, we're going to get there too. There is a game we're going to play, but that'll be more later in the episode. But, uh, so in a previous episode, maybe like episode zero or one or something. <clears throat> God, my throat is killing me. In a previous episode, um, I said, I made a comment about one of your paintings that you haven't finished yet. And we're going to bring that up for everyone to see. Um, so this is a painting that's still sitting behind me and it's a very large painting and you still haven't finished it. And so I'm continuing to hector you until you finish it. Your shrewing is not going to inspire me to do this art. I, <laughs> people, listen, okay, I'll get to it. Or not. You spent so much time on this and it's so close to being done. <clears throat> and I said before that you're a better painter than me. And I don't know what your malfunction over there is where you don't think that's the case. So we're going to review some paintings that we've done, as I insist that you're good at painting. Well, freaking get them out of here then, if you think they're so good, and I will tell you why I think you're wrong. Because what I stated was that I think you're a better painter than me. I don't think I'm a very good painter. So I've done some paintings uh, from the past that I did when I was taking classes, and I took a painting class. So I have some of those, and we have some of yours that you went through. You, um, you have, when you started painting, uh, on your own, I think you started with watercolors. I did. I did start with watercolors. And some of these that you're going to see, or just one of them that you're going to see is back from when I very, very, very first started. And it's, it's a very simplistic one. Nope. Not that one. Is it all oh, this? No, not that one. That one. Okay. So we got painting number one from Danielle. Before, Okay. I was going to say, before you put it on there, I think we should have a discussion, like a tagged uh, comment in this podcast that asks the question about what does a good painter or artist make? Because my opinion is this. <clears throat> oh, I punched the microphone. Good for you. Um, none of my art is original. 
the art that I do is either based on tutorial or reference image such as this one. And I think that there are qualities about the, the paintings that I create that are good, such as like, let's say like the background here, it's not just painted. It's just, I did some, some finessing to it. Um, but it's not original. And Daniel seems to think that it's just as easy as just amassing your reference pi uh, pictures and you just, then you just, you do it. Nay, nay. That is not how it works nay, for me. And, and for me, the, the, the relaxation is just in the procedure of creating things like what you're going to see here. So this one actually was like, uh, a picture I found online and I did like the very elementary school art, middle school art, maybe even high school art. I don't know. I drew the boxes and, and that helped me to draw my picture. So I drew Aang over here. Where you create a grid? I did a grid. Yeah, I did a grid and that's how I do a lot of things. If I have to change the size or I, I, I want to make a, um, like a like a, a drawing before I start painting so I have some good outlines. And the paper that I'm using is good enough that I can use a pencil on there and I can get in an erase and it's not gonna be left over, you know, in the way. What do you think? Looks like a painting to me. Um so <clears throat> what I what I was making the argument uh, about is really that if you're a good painter and if you wanted it to be original you could still go about your process where I think that it would still be relaxing where you're doing what you're doing doing it your way and then if you wanted the the painting to be original for example you could just take a picture that you've already taken and then paint that because then you have your reference it's already set there you don't it's not, it, it's an original creation from the, the ground up because it's a photo that you took. It's your photo and it's your picture. And if you painted it that way, uh, it, it's an original painting. And then if you wanted to take it ever so slightly farther, uh, you get, say, three images together and you just use like your iPad and Adobe Fresco or Procreate, whatever you want to do, and just smash them together real quick. Just crop them out real simple like and then you have a collaged image that you've made and then you can paint that and it's still like not a terribly difficult process like it wouldn't be time consuming really other than just like picking what things you want to do and what you want to paint and then you just smash them together and then you paint it just the same as you would otherwise like the same process you go through or i could just keep following the ways that i already am following i'm just saying well, listen, okay, so I did that with the dog painting because it's partially what uh, is from the famous artist that we still don't remember who it oh, is. Oh, yeah, we have to look that up. Um, the dog is from a picture, um, and if you it's ever see... a Renaissance-era painting. If you ever see the original, you'll be able to tell that I didn't do it exactly the same. So I did do some stuff, so like I guess it's sort of original adjacent, I don't know. I don't know where people fall on that perspective of like... <clears throat> Hence the comment section if anybody wants to weigh in. I mean, it, it would be one thing if like you claimed that it was an original piece and then it wasn't and you were basically ripping off someone else's stuff, then that would be a totally different thing. Yeah. But that's not what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so we got another painting from... Oops. Uh, I got another painting from you. I don't even remember you doing this one. Oh, so when we were all stuck at home, uh, I was doing um, painting sessions with friends, which is what what prompted me to begin art again. Um, I guess my whole life I've always wanted to learn how to be able to draw and be able to paint and be able to do different art forms. And um, just at various times... I was either like told no, it didn't work with my schedule, or I just was focused on other things. And when we were all kind of just sequestered at home, I had the opportunity to start learning and 
So I did. And so this is one of the sessions where we got together and um, my friend said, you know, go online, find a picture of a lantern, I think is what happened. She, I don't know. I don't know if I switched the lanterns from the original or if this is the original lantern. I don't know. But I like it. I think it's kind of cute. Practice making leaves and kind of like a, I don't know if that's an abstract background, but it's just like implying that there's like a forest back there, but you can't really make out any shapes. Yeah, there's there's a couple different terms for that, but I can't remember what they are. Um, I almost want to say that the background is kind of like Asian painting-esque, because I remember that being pointed out by my teacher multiple times. And if you look at them, there's a lot of landscapes. Man, I keep bashing the table and everything. There's landscapes uh, that they do, and they have like these like hills or mountains that kind of intersect, and they go further back, and they get more wispy and faint mm. as it goes. So that's kind of what it makes me think of is something like that, where yeah, the background is very like gestural and expressive rather than being like defined um, with like hard lines and things like that. That cat is just a slop. A plop. A sloppy plop. Which is how she just is. Like she doesn't retain form. She just melts. You Little pick her up cat. and she just... Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> My little pumpkin. God. <laughs> All right. We got one more painting from Danielle. This one I think you said is not done yet. No, it's not done. But it's so <clears throat> cute. <laughs> I like it. I think it's great. And I, I believe this is what you were saying where you're kind of like following someone's tutorial type thing. Yes. I think it's cool. I think it's a cute painting. And it's kind of on topic for what Abra looks like. That's what she kind of looks like. Just. Yeah. Well, and so like this style, it doesn't get much further than this like there's like the black balls are actually like a nod to s i don't know if it's like studio ghibli or something i don't know um but i really i know i could add more to this like i could make like the fur of the cat be a little bit more like with the little furs and the wisps i don't know yeah, i think it's good i think it's cute though i like the purple i like the cup actually i don't like the cup but I like a cat. <laughs> Actually, I hate the whole thing. It's trash. Get it out of my face. Yeah. Um, this uh, this is one of the things that kind of drives me crazy about painting um, is that trying to take a picture of it is nigh impossible to capture it the way it actually looks because you get like the, the reflection, the glare from the paint reflecting the light of the room and you have to try and find the perfect angle to capture it and then also not be casting a shadow on it. And then it still like never looks the same. Like you can look at your screen and you can look at it and you can tell that there's a difference between like the exact color, hues, and saturation. Jesus Christ, woman. Ooh. <laughs> Just trying to be comfortable. I'm trying to, I'm speaking here. <laughs> um, no, I agree. I don't know. Like, um, there really like is professional a... artists like that get their pictures digitally i know it's not that hard to do and well, we have a they light use like a setup. scanner oh yeah like uh if you if you checked out the 10 hundred videos he did that painting that was like in his style the last uh wait was i was gonna say last the last supper, supper. Yeah, is it he the, did do the last supper why was i like what the hell but um he got that professionally scanned by a company and they it's like a high degree scan where they get it perfectly aligned and then it goes into this machine and it's like and then they I think they actually piece it together because the scan resolution is so high end that it captures like the fibers of the canvas. Dang. Is <clears throat> at least that's how I took it from from how expensive it sounded. The molecules are visible. It, it actually photographs the atoms of the paint. Um, but yeah, that that that's something that's always bothered me. Every Everything I've ever made physically, and I have tried to get a picture of it, especially if it has color, it just never looks the same as it does in real life. 
there, there is something of value of like seeing a painting in person. Mm-hmm. It's different than seeing like a photo of it. Oh, I agree, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like there, there's some, especially when a painter uses uh, like heavy application of paint, and it has like volume on the canvas, and so you can like see. And then if you step to the side, it changes a little bit because now you're seeing a different reflection of where you are in relation to the volume of the paint or maybe like shadows and whatnot yeah and and they can also have their own shadows and where is the light if it's like in an art gallery where is the light coming Mm -hmm. from and hitting how is it hitting it yeah (sighs) anyways cat your turn daniel has some paintings from when he was uh doing his little stint of Art. art school art school and i love a lot of these i'm really excited to to show them so when we took the class um it basically per week it was you do one painting in class and that should be even if you don't finish it in class within the time you should finish it within the week and it's it's a project that's get you pa- you paint what you're told to paint effectively like you can set up your own thing but it's like this week we're painting a bag and there's a reason behind that stuff, and it goes to the other classes that we did, the drawing classes where we did stuff in charcoal, and it's similar stuff where you're painting things for a reason, and it's like for the example of the bag, all of a sudden you're like, well, I've never painted a bag before, and now there's unique challenges to doing this and trying to set it up in a way that it looks good, setting up your bag personally, and then just dr- capturing the texture of paper and the wrinkles and the crinkles, the wrinkles and the crinkles. Um, and a lot of those paintings, I think, were, like, the the result of what I did was meh. But the, the homework assignments, which was do your own painting and you can do whatever you want. She just let you do anything. And just as long as you paint something within the week and you bring it in and we talk about it. And those I typically liked a lot more. Um, but I'll, I'll start with the one that was an actual in-class project. Ooh, I like this one. I'm sad that it's not around because I really liked it. Yeah, I think I left it at school, and who knows what she did with it. Because I, I should have gone back to pick it up after the summer. Um, this is uh, actually not an orange, but a, uh, like, the what are they, Clementine? Clementine. Clementine. Um, <clears throat> and I think this was for a, a specific project of, like, drawing fruit or whatever, drawing food, like a still life drawing of some kind of food. And so I took the reference picture. I just took the the orange, the Clementine, out to our yard and the there's thyme, the herb thyme in our yard, and that flowers into purple flowers. So that's what the the purple is, and so it's just it's sitting in the grass. Um, and I did very gestural grass, like I wasn't trying to make it specifically exactly like what the thyme leaves look like or anything. I was just doing some brush strokes to give it some I don't know grassy texture. Yeah, and then like. I actually do do like how the texture of the orange surface came out with the little dots and specks and stuff. I thought that was actually pretty good. Yeah, it was good. I know. I remember she said she really liked it too, and you were like, meh. Yeah. Um, some thought it looks like a pumpkin, and I totally get that. It kind of looks like a pumpkin at first glance. Um, uh, what I was going to say is that a, a reason that I didn't do super great on a lot of the class projects is because for the class I was experimenting with oil paint and we had the option to use acrylic or oil. So like this is an oil painting and it's just a lot slower. And so then when you get rushed to try and finish it by the end of class within the like three hours that you have, uh, a lot of times that's what it kind of looked like. It looked like a rushed painting that wasn't like super done. And it's hard because if you want to add layers to your painting with oil, uh, it takes forever to dry. It, it could take a week. And so if you mix in too much paint before it dries, then it's just going to turn to mud. Yeah. Because when you mix too many colors together, it just turns brown or gray. And I think that's like that's an issue that I face. And I don't know. I don't know if it's like a bad thing or if it's just like a human thing, but... I know for myself, like I have a few unfinished paintings and that's just because like for whatever reason I had to stop. And then if I just get too far removed from finishing it, and that's what I would worry about with oil because you have to be very patient, wait for each layer to dry. You might be able to assist it. I know that there are additives that make the drying process go faster. 
you know you can bust out the the hair dryer yeah um well you you could use like the we have a heat gun you could use a heat gun <clears throat> i don't know how much i don't know what effect <laughs> i don't know what effect that would have on it like if it would mess with the color or anything like that i don't know, I don't know. but but that's something like i feel like i need to have like a discussion with myself you know why is it that when you need to finish your dog paint you just feel like there's like a force field between your <coughs> hand, your paint brushes, and the painting. It's like in, I can't do it. It's like the reverse magnet. The paintbrush is moving away from your hand. <laughs> and I feel like, that's what that's like the mental process that I go through. Like this freaking cat in a cup. Very simple. Probably would take me like less than a half an hour to finish it. And yet I just haven't. There's a there's a thing from the cartoon Dexter's Lab where I think it was Dexter's Lab where there's a character um, who cannot he's like chronically unable to finish anything like anything and they go into his house or something and then there's like <laughs> a sandwich that has like just the corner left and it's like one bite away from being done and there's just a ton of stuff that he can't finish but he's like really brilliant at the same time. I had that experience with a bagel one time. Like I had in my hand for probably 20 minutes, like a bite of bagel. And for some reason I could not put the damn bagel in my mouth. Like I really couldn't. Like it was it like approaching like vomit reaction. I oh just God. did not want to put the bagel in my mouth. <laughs> Maybe I have finishing, but you kept holding finishing it. problems. Yeah, I think I finally was like, all right, at this point I just really have to eat it. I just can't I'm not do eat it. it. I'm going to do it. Isn't that weird? I don't know, man. It's like you, your brain just locks up and you're just stuck. All right, I, I can't get out of here. Uh, so I got another painting. This is not a project, but one of the uh, do whatever you want. This is kind of like a spacey painting. And again, um, I think, oh, you know, I think what I may have done is the acrylic base and then like some oil on top of it. Maybe. I can't remember with this one. You know, I don't know if I said this or I don't know what happened. Like, why there are the specks? Are those other stars? It was supposed to be. I wish that we could take those off because it looks so yeah. cool without them. I'm not. I'm trying aware, to be, dude. I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm looking at it. And I'm like, it's so cool, and like the nebula in the back. I don't even know if you mean for it to be like a nebula yeah, back it is. there, but well, what else would it be? I don't know. It could be like a another planet that's just like in a cloud and you just can't see it because it's so cloudy, like a black cloud. Why are you making that face? <laughs> you don't know anything about space, do you? I'm just saying it could be anything. What? It could, but It could be a masterpiece, but then you went and fucked it up with all those little specks everywhere. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I recognize that those specs did not work the way I wanted. Uh, that kind of goes with painting in general. and like, Is this why I'm a better painter? Yeah. <laughs> Is this all you have to show <laughs> for you yourself? Show? Oh, I'd be embarrassed if I were you. No, 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 no. no. You were in the learning phase. Like, you cannot be critical. <laughs> you were like, like two years old. You can't be that critical, okay, of, of like a fresh new painter and and look at the amazing like skill that you're showing so like okay daniel has like a really good eye for like shading and blending and i just don't have that and so thank goodness he's here because whenever i'm doot dooting on my stuff he comes over do, and do, do. and it really frustrates me during but after i'm so thankful that you've come over and said like why don't you do like blah, 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 or shade it over here do 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 and I'm like, get your hands off of my painting! And then later, I'm happy about it. So I don't. Know. Oh, can you can you drop the picture <clears throat> of the the Majora's Mask thing real quick? Can you find that? You've got to have it there. No, you, you didn't send you. it to me. It's so on this that. device right here. I sure it's hope it's not in your photos. I don't know where it's at. Um, this is one that I did after my classes. And I never got to show my teacher, unfortunately. Oh, really? No, she never saw this. Oh, it's so cool. I thought this, this is one was, of my favorites. I thought this is something that she would actually enjoy. 
um, because this is a damaged canvas that we had. And I wonder if I can zoom in on this guy. How did that happen? I have no oh, idea. Oh, you know what? It just started out as like a little divot in the in the canvas, and then you dug it out a little bit. Ooh, oh, I really I liked did. this one. Yeah. I did. There was a little bit of damage, and I made it more substantial by just like carving into it. So the idea was to try and see what I could do with a design based around the, the hole that was already there. Uh, so I just made it a little bit bigger. And the reason I think that my teacher would have liked this one is because she was very much about like the visual texture of things. And she, she is like a true, no joke, just traditional artist, crazy art lady. Um, there, there's like memes of that, of like nobody. And then the art teacher, and she's just got like this crazy frizzled hair and, she dresses with like super baggy clothing. She's like an artist through and through. <laughs> and she she loves uh, like texture and other things like that and physical real paintings. Um, so I thought she would have enjoyed this. You should um, email it to her and be like, last huzzah. I really need to go back there and just see if I can get, I want to see if she has any of my paintings. And then if she is still there, I imagine she's still there, but um. I could possibly bring this in and show her. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I th it took me a while. So what I did was I took a picture of the canvas with my phone and then I put it into Procreate at the time uh, to try and draft up some designs. And so that was also like considering the exact shape of the canvas because I think it's like slightly not a perfect square. Uh, I bet if you measured the canvas, it's like ever so slightly rectangular. Um, but by doing it on Procreate, uh, you get to create a design that will fit because you took the exact picture of, so I didn't have to measure anything is what I'm getting at. Where are you going? I'm going. Well, it looks like, looks like the episode's over, I guess. <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm really trying to find this picture. Shenanigans with Daniel and Danielle, mostly just Danielle being the shenaniger. Is that a word? I think I just made up a word. I think you might want to watch yourself with that <laughs> word. I don't think it's a word, but it's dangerously, dangerously close to some other stuff. I won't say that. <laughs> Get us another picture to look at. <laughs> You're a terrible well, human. I was trying to think of what I was saying. Uh, the other thing I thought was really cool with this is based on doing the face painting, um, the, the eye was not going to fit on the page for what I needed. And so I... I took the side picture to have the eye rolling around the edge of the actual canvas. I do think it's so cool. That's really awesome. So, like, that's another thing that I think is pretty rad, uh, utilizing the edge of the canvas as part of the thing. Uh, I guess there's a whole there's a whole thing about, like, galleries and paintings and stuff like that and, like, what you're supposed to do. So, like, you either paint the entire edge of the canvas all the way to the end that would be visible from any angle. And you could just border it and just like, I don't know, pick a color and just like color just a solid flat, whatever, or you would frame it. And so in the framing that that would get covered up. Uh, I personally like the idea of just like painting the edge. I have some paintings. I have some paintings where I still need to finish the edge because it's just the white of the canvas. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it looks like we got last minute entry into okay. the. Okay, but we, let's not get distracted here. So, what do you mean we've been distracted? What are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, no, I want to talk about this one. Okay. Because I absolutely love the mixture of the colors. I think it's just really cool, and um, I think if we don't uh, sell it someday, I think it should go on the walls. All right, I support it being on the wall. I support, I support it being... everything being on the wall. It's just a matter of what you. What you accept onto the walls. I don't know. Er, I think that you are trying to make anybody who might be watching this think I'm a shrew. <laughs> but listen, people. He freaking painted a door when we moved in. I stripped the door. You painted a mural on it. Your art is on the walls here. I have not said no to anything in my memory. Mm, I'll so, find something you'll say no to. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a painting I did. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it is interesting how, like, 
with a with a piece of art there if you were like say put it on display somewhere there is consideration of like how you want it displayed and what's the optimal way to view the mm -hmm. experience and there is something to the uh the hole in the canvas because it would be subject to whatever's behind it yeah so it's like do you put i considered putting some just some stretchy black fabric and like kind of like gluing it to the back of the painting so it would always have a consistent just like a black void yeah we could we could also like um do you know how on the back of like some paintings there's like black paper like we could put some black paper no idea what you're talking about okay well i think we could put black paper on the back all right so the whole distraction thing painting from danielle let me bring this bad boy up we got it in bam look how cute it is yeah, so this is the painting where you were getting really frustrated, and I think it was more around the mask area, and I think I helped with the eyes now that I'm looking at it. Uh, that was, I think, my main point, is adding some darker, like, red, red orange, and then mixing a bright yellowy orange to add the, the highlights to give it, like, more roundness. Oh, no, I remember that there was more because you helped a lot with the space and um like the shading what? on the feathers yeah i was a, i was on a struggle bus there was a daniel with a bunch of q-tips up with the white lines in space and he was like did i do that i don't remember doing that there was a lot of um but yeah i dig this this is one of my favorite things that i've ever made and been assisted by daniel because i really need to give daniel some some kudos on this because it would not be what it is if it was just me working on this thing. Perhaps it would be another unfinished painting, like the dog. Never to fully understand what it is to be alive as a piece of art in this world. Uh, so I got a few more paintings too. Uh, I'll just bring up three at a time on this one. I was gonna say, Bam. Uh, cause we need to move on. This is a lot. Bam, and Oh god, this one's way bigger. Yeah. I think I think I think we need less. Because we need to move on. Well, all the point was is that some of these are also oil as well. I liked the the one on the left. Uh that was heavily saturated with linseed oil. So if you do oil painting, you can uh loosen it up. And then <clears throat> as a result, because it's so oily, it took like three weeks to dry, which is another Oh, another lesson to be learned. I remember that because I touched it. Yeah, and so you have to oh, set aside your painting somewhere where it's not going to be disturbed by random people or yourself or a cat walking on it. Oh man, a cat! Because given that it takes a whole week, <laughs> if if anyone's out there considering oil painting, I just encourage you to think about where you're going to store it. And then my last painting, actually the last painting that I did, Mordor. 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 This was a very small painting. It's actually over to my, I don't know if it's on the camera or not, but it, yes, it so. is on the wall over there. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I did mess it up because like in the top left corner, that was supposed to be more glowy. And then it was oil as well. And then so it, I smudged it on accident and I couldn't undo it. And I think I already got rid of the yellow paint or something like that. And so it was just, I couldn't do anything. Actually, this whole left side was supposed to be yellow. Anywho, we're moving on. So that, that's my endeavor of paintings. I think the moral of the story is paint more. Everybody should paint more. Everybody should do more of what helps them get out of the, the chaos of the world and stressing ourselves out. And I think that that is what art and creativity is good for what chaos there's the world is at peace right now and all is well <laughs> and i'll let you just imagine whatever i might be referring to so uh we're gonna do a little game here at the end i also don't have like a final product like a main art piece that i did because i, I have one that's still in works uh and it's taking me a lot longer than i expected to work on it uh, so that that might show up in the next episode, but e so now we just gotta play this art game.
We gotta do it. We have to. I've been looking forward to it since he told us that we were playing an art game, so I'm excited. So, I found this website. Oh my god, where is it? It's it's a game where you guess, is it artificial intelligence or is it a real painting by a human's hand? Bam. Uh, I tested this before and I had not so impressive results. And we're going to each take our guess. I'm going to keep a tally of if we guess correctly. And we'll see at the end of doing okay. this who got the most correct. Oh, right. Hey. Oh, okay. So there's paintings. There's literature. I haven't looked at the literature. I imagine that it seems like it would just be like an actual writing, just yeah. like a chat GBT text prompt. And I was, oh, there's no way I could guess that. That's a wreck. I feel like that would be impossible. Maybe we'll take a look at that to see if that's the case. But we're gonna do the paintings. All right. Is there a prize for the winner? <laughs> do you need a prize? I like prizes. Back rub. And the winner gets a back rub. Yay! <laughs> a, a real one. Can you guess if this is AI <coughs> or an old master? Oh, it keeps track of our. But we'll we'll tally up our individual guesses. Can this like zoom out at all? Why is it zoomed in so much? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> okay, keep your thoughts in your head. I do have my thoughts. Hmm. Okay, what's your guess? My guess is AI. Mine too. All right. Correct. Mid Journey AI, a ballet dancer pastel by Edgar Degas, 1885. What do you mean by. Oh, open up a new tab. Let's what? see what the, the original is. Is that saying. So that's saying that they told the AI to base it on that? Is that what we're, is that what we're getting here? We're going to look it up. Ballet dancer. Degas. By Degas. Um, ballet. Is it Degas or Degas? Oh, I see. So it's an AI very much in the style of this painter. I Interesting. imagine that it's Degas. That looks like yeah, a very probably. French. Probably Degas. Very cool. Okay, one for both of us. Put that on the tally. So far, no one's winning. All right, hold on. I think a tally on. That it's a tally via the number one. Okay. Next. Where's the next button? Is this website like losing its mind right now? Okay. Oh. Oh, I already have a thought. I immediately have a thought. Drink it in. No offense, but I'm not a big fan. Um, Either way. I kind of would be on the same page. Whether it's real or not, not my favorite. Um, hmm. Computing. Computing. Uh, I think it's real. I think it's real. <clears throat> what do you think? Uh, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of what something. Honestly, you know what it reminds me of? We were just watching it, chapter one. Oh, it does. Yes. It looks like the the thing that the one kid is afraid of. That's a painting in mm. in the church or whatever. And it's got that weird wobbly face. Yeah, I don't like that. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go with. I think it's a real painting. Old, Old master. master. As it were. Correct. Ooh. Portrait. Jane, Jane, who? Oh my God! Who be turn? Amadeo Modigliani. What kind? Where? Where does that name come from? Ooh, if they're Italian, man, that does not do a, a whole lot of justice to the Italian masters. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, this is rude. I'm sorry, everybody. Well, they're probably dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's just kind of the style. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just their style. Kind I of like... sort of think I like their other paintings. These ones that are listed more up at the top. I kind of like them a lot better than this one, though. Like, if you put those over... Yeah, a lot of these I like a lot more. And there's some that I actually even recognize. Hmm. Um, I like these ones a, quite a bit more than the one that we just looked at. That one's at the top, bottom one. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've seen any of them. Not that I remember. They kind of have like... Yeah, it has like a warped head all the time and then like a long neck. Maybe this that is plays all the into same... It. This maybe is all the same woman. So maybe she just has that face. <laughs> it's like photo perfect. That's exactly what this woman looks like, and you better not fucking make fun of it. Next. <laughs> oh, we were correct. I gotta tally that up. Oh boy. Look at this next one though. Hmm. Mm. And just because we had two no oh, no, never mind. I was gonna say something stupid. Hmm. I want to say I have my answer. Okay. What's your guess? Oh, I'm going to be upset. You know what? I don't know. I'm going to say AI. I'm going to say old master. So we're disagreeing. Oh. oh. It's AI. Loser. I was almost going to say real. So that's one for me, none for ye. <laughs> Mid Journey AI, 18th century sanguine drawing of a maid, sketched by Gabriel de Saint Aubin. 1784, paper texture. You small furry thing, I guess I'll throw your squirrel. Hmm. See? Based oh, on that, man. the um, dang, diggity, dang it. The th so what really got me is it's so hard to identify AI sometimes, and this one is a good example. There's no key features that really throw it off, except I started to look more at this tie right here at her blouse, mm -hmm. and like you kind of got like a knot, and then there's a loop, and, it's and then you got this this offshoot here, but then it's like. It, it doesn't feel like an actual bow that someone would have painted. Like, if they were a master and they made this, I think this bow would have made more sense. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like it's tied by a child. It doesn't <laughs> look like a uniform... It doesn't look like a uniform bow. Yeah, and I was looking... Honestly, I was looking at the lines, and I didn't look that closely at the bow. Um, I was looking at the lines in the background, and and I really... Honestly, if I really should have said AI. I, I, I see now. That, now it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think this this whole area around the boobage <clears throat> is kind of where it gets a little wonky if you really think about it. Boobs. What'd you say over there? I didn't say anything. What'd you say? I said nothing. <laughs> All right. Next. I don't know if this thing has like a I think we could just keep doing it until we die. Uh huh. Hmm. <laughs> This is a tough one. I think it's real. I'm just gonna put that right out there. I think it's real. So you're gonna slap it down on the table like that. Yeah, I'm gonna slap it down on the table. But what about this? This looks a little weird. It does look a little weird. Down by the neck and the shoulder. What's going on right there? Mm. Mm, I don't know. That's pretty good. I'm gonna stick with real. <clears throat> I think it's real. I'm going AI on this. Oh! Boo! Okay, so I have to put this out the there. Sniper. That, that, no, 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 no. You have seen this before, so like you already have not played this, this. Not this. You've piece. played this game with this website before. I did like so. Maybe you 10. have already been able to like pre-think stuff like what you pointed out in the bottom left corner. Mm -hmm. Please and thank you. <laughs> This this is my first time. This hey, is your I, second time. You stuck to your answer after I pointed it out. I know. That's because I didn't want to be biased by what you had to say. I also felt like the, the ear lobe looked a little strange to me. 
Like there's t- like two little divots in there, and that's kind of odd, which could be a thing, but I was like, I don't know. The ear just looks a little strange. Mm. Okay. Slightly. But people, there's like a, I guess ears are pretty unique. So Anton Van Dyke. Listen, okay. Uh, this is bad. Look how good it is. Look how good it is. <laughs> it's bad. It looks amazing. I'm going to retire. It yeah. looks it looks and has features from artists that we learned about in your art history class. Like, this is yeah. crazy. Well, that's the thing is it's just the AI goes, look it's at bananas. classic paintings and copy it. No likey. Because it can, like, go through the literature and it can read about, like, what are some of the techniques that were popular Dude, during and different the, times. Yeah, and you can have chat AI just give you a description of an AI-made piece of art and then explain to you as if it were real and why it's real. You could tell it to do that. I, well, I don't know if you could... I don't know if there's a program that could take in images and then do that. But like in theory, you could. If you combine the text and the image AI, you could do that and have it explain to you why it's real. If they allowed it. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, boy. This is up to anyone's guess. I'm going to put it on the table right away and say real. I don't want it to be real. That's real. Well, it's just like when you get to the the, the like more modern art, yeah, it just gets so yeah. ridiculous. Daniel's not a modern art fan. Um, and then eventually it just devolves into drawing a square, and then that's it. I think it's real. Yeah, probably. I don't see anything that's. This is, looks. I mean, like, there's weird like... stuff like the ear. There's one ear, but then someone could have a hairstyle where they put on, you know, one ear. Yeah. It's not cubist, but it's during like some kind of adjacent time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Cubist, like in that era of where it starts to become shapey and mm-hmm. flat. It's what it is. They they started to flatten things out more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go with real. I'm going real. Old master, not that old. Wrong. Wrong. Oh no. So we both lost Ooh. a point. Stable Diffusion AI, Portrait of a Red-Haired Woman, Modigliani, Oil on Canvas 2. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> Dag Nabbit Diggity Dog. Yep. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't we see this in the other Google search? Yes. Is this the same person or am I I'm just dumb? Must be. I might be dumb. This one's hilarious. That face just is... Stop. Stop it. All right. What are we at? We're at out of five. I think we're going to just go to ten. So let's go to the next one. Well, we got to hustle it up. Um, Yeah. I'm going to speed run this new and see... Shit. What did I say on the last one? That one was... AI. We said old master, but the last I know, one but the was last AI. one was AI. And this looks so similar. I'm going to say I don't even I, know. I, I, at this rate, I don't even know what's real anymore, dude. I'm going to say it's real. What do you think? Scroll it. Yeah. Looks real to me. Could could be real. So you want to say old real, schmaster? Yeah. Schmasty. Wrong. Oh, ah. yeah. Same. What is it with this? Get out of this, here. Stop stepping. We- website and liking this particular artist. Yeah, they're ripping the one dude. Oh, oh we, now we got something. <clears throat> now we got something to ogle. Okay. From afar, looks real. Yeah, I but I immediately start to... Okay, tell towards. me what you think makes you question it. It's because when I scroll down, his legs look weirdly small for his body. That happens all the time. I don't know. It could be a perspective thing. Uh, I'm going to go with real. I'm, I'm going to go AI on this. Do whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know anymore. So you think it's real? Yeah. No! No! Another for me! No. Someone's getting a back robe! <laughs> we don't even have to play anymore. There's no <laughs> chance. 
There's no chance. Watercolor sketch. Oh, no, this hmm. isn't real. I don't think so. I think it's real. I think it's not. So I'm going to say it's real. You say nay. Oh! <gasps> okay, point for you. By Claude Monet. Musée des, des Oreilles. Oh. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> AI. Why? It's a, I think it's the eyes. What about them? I don't know what to tell you. That's just what I think. I'm just going with my gut here, dude. I'm losing. I'm inbreeding. losing grip on reality. In, that could be the inbreeding. The oh. eyes could be wrong because of inbreeding. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Only rich kids get painted like this. <laughs> Hold on, let me look. Okay. The eyes. He just looks tired and malnourished. What are you talking about? He's got pink, lively cheeks. That's death. That's the death pallor. <laughs> um. Fart nuggets. <laughs> oh. Yeah, maybe it's just AI. Let's find out. Correct! Hey. Woo! It Brain just. Portrait. Uh, it's one of those things where for me it <clears throat> landed around the eyes and it's just uncanny. And it, it's the uncanniness, the difference between the way the eyes look and the way the rest of it looks to me. I don't know. The reason why I chose is because of the collar on the right side, like those scribbly little lines. Like, what is that? That's a good point. <laughs> what is that? That's a that's a better point than mine. Mine was just intuition on that. They wouldn't they wouldn't have that. The they collar is all jacked like up. That. They would not have let that be if they were yeah. going to go through sitting for a portrait. Oh, my God. For hours yeah. on end with oil paint again, as we established, takes a long time. Mm hmm. Can we like remove one from? Oh, don't forget to add my point. I I did. Add it again. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more points that I I don't want to feel bad. <laughs> okay, I think we're on to the last one. No, we have to do two more, so I have at least a chance to tie. Oh my god. <laughs> hmm. No, lower. No, wait. See, yeah, this one plus one more. No, I think oh, this, this is out of... Bad. Damn it. Because we haven't guessed yet, so this is the 10th. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's got the stamp over here, which makes me a little suspect. Like, why is that there? Is that a normal thing for them to do? Would they have put a stamp lettering over here? Is it like their signature? I don't know. Bob, ooh, you know what? Look at this house right here. Look at the way the leaves are interacting with AI. the roof. AI. AI. <sighs> We're both wrong. <laughs> well, now, now I just look like an asshole. Because <laughs> I'm like, look at all how fucked up this roof is. <laughs> but the 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 reason why I thought that too is because actually, like the point of the stamp. Is that I don't think is is applied in the same way that the the painting is applied. Like I do yeah. believe that it's actually a stamp, and it just doesn't look different enough to me. But clearly, we don't know anything anymore. So take a point off of yours, but leave all mine. <laughs> I'm not taking a point off. I got one, two, three, That's four, five. five correct out of ten, which is awful, and you got three correct listen okay but i did influence you more as we started doing it and i was like no look at it let's just okay all right we're done i'm retiring from art i don't want to be around anymore <sighs> yeah this is a little bit of a, a weird episode i don't know how long have we been running for an hour and three minutes oh dang i mean um it was pokey we poked along I, I, ran I thought it was the house fine. a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was fine. Um, it, it, that's kind of my idea is that we're not stuck to a, a particular format of we have to do the episodes a particular way. I like to play in the game. It's fun. 
Oh yeah, we should put the the link in the in the the description of the video though, so that if anybody yeah. else wants to go and, and take take a look at the AI guessing game yeah. and see how you're doing. Yeah, if you play it, definitely come back and leave a comment on this. Let us know how you did with your AI detection skills. Yep. It's it's upsetting. It's really upsetting. Anyway, that's that's been the episode. Be good people. Daniel. <laughs> Dude, you looked at me like I had offended your family. I was like, Jared, all I did was go like this, and you're just like, what are you doing? <laughs>